The Coloradan who admitted trying to steal an election is still an attorney here, perhaps not for long. Denver's abandoned bridge that no one will admit to owning is too expensive to fix up, according to the city. City people intent on raising chickens are accidentally ending up with roosters, <laughs> then dumping them in the country. It's another one. It's another one. You know, they, they just keep pumping them out. It's a problem that we really can't keep up with. And every Friday around here ends with your neighbors sharing the headlines of their lives, the stuff that usually wouldn't make the news. My good news is I have graduated after 10 you years. <laughs> 10 years, wow. 30 minutes is gonna fly by. You're on next. Election lies have consequences. A nearly $150 million defamation verdict against Rudy Giuliani in Georgia today. And for his Colorado counterpart, Jenna Ellis, a new challenge to her law license in this state. Two government watchdog groups are again trying to get Donald Trump's former attorney disbarred for her election conspiracy lies. She was censured for them in Colorado, but since then she's pleaded guilty in the criminal case in Georgia. Got the smile and mugshot and everything. The complaint that led to the censure in Colorado was brought by the left-leaning group States United Democracy Center. That's also one of the groups behind this latest complaint. They say that Ellis was publicly defiant about the issue following her censure in Colorado and that the court proceedings in Georgia show that her conspiracy theories put voters and election workers at risk. The groups are also pursuing similar ethics complaints against Trump attorney and former CU visiting Professor John Eastman. He just went through months of disbarment hearings in California this year. Eastman's still waiting on a court decision about whether he can keep his law license. Colorado Parks and Wildlife is bringing wolves back from Oregon this weekend, even as they wait for a judge to rule on whether those wolves can be released in Colorado. CPW will not tell us where they would keep the wolves while they await the decision. I am no wolfologist, but I presume that they would keep them in self-storage units on the western slope. One per wolf, obviously. Some poor CPW guy's job every day would be to roll up the big metal door, throw in some meat, refill the water, and slam it closed real quick. If CPW would just answer our very fair questions about where they would store wolves, that would save us all a lot of time and speculation. But back to the lawsuit. So it comes from a group of ranchers who want to delay the voter-approved plan to release gray wolves on the western slope by the end of this year. The ranchers argue that the state and the feds have not fully considered the environmental impact. And I mean, talk about last minute. Yesterday, an attorney for CPW told a judge that parks workers will select our wolves in Oregon on Sunday and could be ready to release them in Colorado as early as Monday. We're waiting for the judge to rule. She indicated that it would be today. CPW has said they could just release the wolves and then use their GPS collars to go and find them if the judge decides to delay reintroduction. Colorado State House has record numbers of women and LGBTQ lawmakers as well as lawmakers of color. But you sure wouldn't know it from looking at Democrats' choices to lead the committees at the Capitol. Democratic House Speaker Julie McCluskey is getting pushback for a second straight year on her all-white committee chairs. Rep. Alex Valdez, Democrat from Denver, called it unacceptable. Former Democratic House Speaker Terrence Carroll said it's very concerning. All 10 committee chairs are white. Six of them are holdovers from last year, when Speaker McCluskey faced similar calls that she needed to diversify leadership. McCluskey says that the committee appointments are typically two-year gigs. Rep. Valdez argued that House leadership ignored his calls to at least replace the outgoing chairs with more diverse leaders. The only committee leaders of color are some vice chairs. Six of nine are people of color. The speaker says those are younger lawmakers and that starting them in the number two role is a way to prepare for diverse leadership in the future. Speaker McCluskey also moved this week to sideline two of her most vocal critics within the Democratic caucus. She stripped Representatives Bob Marshall and Elizabeth Epps of a prominent committee role. The two of them had sued to force fellow legislators to stop holding secret meetings at the Capitol. So we have followed the saga of Denver's Orphan Bridge for a while now, maybe too long, but y'all seem interested in it. The story of how a railroad bridge right in downtown Denver came to be abandoned. No one will admit owning the thing. Neighbors just want it fixed up. Now the city says that'll cost $3 million. So in other words, ain't gonna happen. Steve Stager's back on the bridge. 
no record of ownership yet. If the abandoned Delgany Street Bridge over Cherry Creek were on the MLS, realtors would have to get creative. Opportunity for sweat equity. It has great bones, a hidden gem waiting to be polished. None of that is enough for the city of Denver to put in an offer. It's unsafe. Um, typically, as a regular practice, we don't take on assets that are in poor condition and needing, uh, you know, a lot of work. No one seems to know who owns this bridge at the end of Delgany Street. The city closed it almost three years ago after someone's foot slipped through the wood. Denver's Department of Transportation and Infrastructure says they had an inspection this summer and found it needed a boatload of work. The deck needs to be replaced. Um, it's quite worn, uh, falling apart there on the deck. And the bill for that is too high. We'll we estimate that would be about $3 million to fix and make it safe. About half of the city's budget to maintain all bridges, about 400 around the city. So we know we don't have $3 million identified to fix it. Um, and so, you know, we're hoping that perhaps maybe with a future bond initiative, uh, maybe voters would wouldn't want to put that on the list. You could knock this bridge down and rebuild it again for $3 million. Neighbors like Andrea Khan aren't buying the inspection report. To come up with $3 million is their way of saying, we just don't want to fix your bridge. So it's just going to sit here and deteriorate. She is pretty ticked. So we're going to just have rotted bridges as they collapse up and down the up and down the river. That's nice. If only there were a millionaire nearby who could afford that bill. Until then, they'll have to wait on the city or a nonprofit or maybe the actual owner to come forward. And I think everybody in the neighborhood is going to be very upset by this. So everyone originally thought that the neighboring Greenway Foundation owned the bridge, and that group did its own study of how much it might cost to reopen it. They anticipated about $250,000, a lot less than $3 million back at the time, but then they backed out. So for now, it sounds like this bridge is just going to remain closed until you find somebody who either wants to say, hey, oh, yeah. shoot, I left a bridge there. Oh, that's mine? Darn it. Yes, oh. I've been looking for that thing. <laughs> All over town. Yeah, I just, I, it just seems like an interesting part of infrastructure. And it's cool, it's history. And it gets you to Ball Arena. It gets you to park across the street. There's yeah. stuff around there. It's the kind of thing that in a town that didn't have a lot of stuff like that, they would try to preserve. Yeah. But in Denver, it's just another bridge. And, uh, you know, there's another railroad bridge right next to it that's still in function. There's one crosses over next to Coo Hills on the way into Ball Arena yeah. there. That one's still working just as well. And the city says if it were a means of getting across the street, there are other ways to do it. But if that was the only way, then, then there might be more priority. But it's just kind of tough right now. An abandoned decorative bridge. Decorative bridge. Right. We could do something fun with it, couldn't we? Put some lights oh, on yeah, it. Yeah, we could do amazing things with it. Send your ideas to next at 9news.com. Steve, yeah. thank you. The school board president on the Western Slope, who unsuccessfully tried to bring in that controversial conservative social studies curriculum to rifle, is now stepping down from his leadership role because he says the board has become too political. Tony May's critics want him gone altogether. They're planning a recall. What I've been seeing is a lot of political climate that's hit this boardroom. I want to bring down the temperature of this boardroom. <coughs> And I think the only way to do that is for me to step down as president. So Garfield RE2 board president Tony May is going to leave that leadership position. Stay on the board, though. He was the one trying to get the district to adopt that American birthright standard that's all about Christianity, patriotism, American exceptionalism. He faced overwhelming community opposition, tried to pull the proposal just before the board voted it down. Before stepping out of the president's role, he painted the opposition from teachers and staff as, quote, disrespect. Said he feels the school district is going in the wrong direction. So he stays on the board for now. Recall petitions say he wasted taxpayer money on partisanship and he mistreated staff. His critics have until January to gather enough signatures to trigger a recall election. All right, it's time for one of our favorite holiday traditions here on Next Each Year. The part where we get holiday gifts for 10 thousand kids in need. The nonprofit A Precious Child puts together this massive effort year after year, and they've come to rely on our help. So this week's Word of Thanks microgiving campaign will help buy gifts for kids in need up and down the front range. 
A precious child connects with thousands of families. They get linked up by schools and the foster care system, domestic violence shelters, homeless shelters, other community partners. And this has been a tough year for a lot of these families with inflation and other pressures. Bottom line is they're obviously prioritizing things like food and rent over being able to get holiday gifts. And we know that every child should share the joy of a gift for Christmas. A precious child tells me that their 10,000 kid list filled up in record time this year. And for them, that's heartbreaking because they know that there were more requests coming. And in fact, they get about five to 10 a day and they have for months. So that's where we come in. We're raising the money to buy, kid, buy gifts for kids on that overflow list. Scan the QR code on your screen or text the word thanks to 303-871-1491 to get that link to donate. You have proven that even $5 helps, so as always, I'll match the first 50 donations of five bucks to get us started. And this is very exciting. This week, for the first time, you can simplify your giving by setting up a monthly donation to the Word of Thanks Fund. You set it up one time, and your monthly donation will be automatically split between all the nonprofits that we feature each month. You use the same QR code, same text to get there to donate monthly. I know a ton of you have been asking for this option literally for years, a way to give automatically and make it simpler. I'm sorry it took us this long, but here it is, just in time for this holiday effort. So Steve is one of the birds that was misidentified as a female and shipped out to a feed store. Poor Steve. Colorado's backyard chicken boom runs afoul of a Deckard's old rooster band. Got it? Rooster sanctuaries say they don't have room for all those rejects. And we will end this week the way that we always do, with nothing but good news. See that Sierra? Bring 49 down and pay the payment on the window. See that terrain? Bring 49 down and pay the payment on the window. Alpine Buick GMC is selling every new vehicle for just 49 down. And pay the payment on the window. Mic drop. Nope. Hey. New Buick Investa, 49 down, 269 a month. New GMC Sierra, 4x4, 49 down, 479 a month. Call 800 New Credit. Bring 49 down. And pay the payment on the window. At Alpine Buick GMC. Since 1977, the Wilhite Law Firm has been serving injured Coloradans across the Mountain West. This year, we are voted Best Personal Injury Law Firm in the Mile High. Whether you've been injured on the road or at work, our skilled legal team is here to provide you award-winning legal services. Don't delay. Call today for your free consultation. And remember, there is no fee until you win. Call or text the Wilhite Law Firm today. 303-GOOD-LAW. That's 303-GOOD-LAW. As another year comes to a close, we want to thank you for making Nine News Colorado's number one news source in the morning, in the evening, late night, online, and streaming, and proving yet again why Nine News is Colorado's news leader. Deeply reported and well told. Criteria for being nationally recognized for a DuPont Columbia Award. And two Nine News investigations are finalists. No other local TV station in the country can say that. We keep this love in a photograph We make these memories for ourselves Where our eyes are never closing our hearts are never broken And time's forever frozen still So you can keep At End Credit Union, you're more than a member. You're an owner. With no strings checking at End Credit Union, you keep what's yours. No monthly maintenance fees, no end ATM fees, no minimum balance. Plus, you earn dividends. Start banking like you own the place with no strings checking. The hassle-free, stress-free checking you deserve. End Credit Union. The issue of illegal roosters in Colorado cities has turned into a real cock up as people then abandon the birds in the country. So many abandoned birds that a rescue group is now offering a reward for anybody who helps convict someone for intentionally dumping a rooster. Our Julissa Irizarry explains. Most kids dream of a home built with animals. Okay, go ahead, buddy. With age, Jewel Johnson. <laughs> made it a reality. 
She founded the Rooster Sanctuary at Danzig's Roost in Bennett. Like who doesn't want to wake up to all these happy animals? It's just a blessing that they're alive. Getting older is exactly why she's here. Hi, FP. Because going through puberty is foul, even for foul. They're just finding their voice. They're like, I am a rooster. You know, I'm here. And then everybody around, all the humans are like, oh no. Back in September, Johnson says she got a call about a rooster dumped near 32nd in Federal in Denver. She found a roughly four month old male bird near a busy street. She took him in and called him Steve. He's lucky, but it's just, it's another one. They just keep pumping him out. It's a problem that we really can't keep up with. The boom of backyard chickens has an unexpected consequence, abandoned roosters, <laughs> because baby chicks are hard to gender. As they mature, the calls come in. It's always the same, like I said. You know, we purchased these chicks in the spring. It's August, and now he's crowing. We legally can't have them. Can you help me? Roosters are illegal in the city of Denver. So are drakes and intact goats. So when a family hoping for eggs gets a noise complaint instead, there aren't many options. Where's Jim? Jim. Well, and that's a peacock up. So there we go. Now it's on us. Bottom line, Broken Shovels Farm, that's another sanctuary out there, has told us that they're constantly getting calls, like five calls a day for people who want to get rid of a rooster they're not allowed to have in the city. And they said that they expect at least one of those five people is probably going to dump their bird. That sanctuary is also still taking roosters, but said they just can't take all of the ones that are offered to them. If people are found with a rooster in the city of Denver, they are likely to get a citation. And the issue, Lauren Robinson, is that even if you're quiet about the fact that you have a rooster, <laughs> it's not likely to stay a secret. <laughs> True. Yeah. There's, there's some logic behind that statement. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> but no, when, when they're little, when they're chicks, like they're difficult to sex, you know, uh, it's not just kind of like, you know, you look at the undercarriage and figure it out. <laughs> uh, and then next thing you know, you thought that you'd have an egg laying hen and instead you have a neighborhood wide alarm clock. Yeah. And that's a problem. It's a very loud secret to keep. Yeah, it's a loud secret to keep. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there you go. You learn something new around here every day. All right, and that, that's the point of news, right? Yeah, why not? <laughs> well, outside we have a live look out in Glenwood Springs. Beautiful after the sun has set and everything's lit. I love that shot. At DIA, though, we're at 43 degrees. It feels closer to 40 degrees outside with that wind coming down from the north at just five miles per hour. Not too gusty, but enough to make it feel a little colder on the skin. As we take a look at our HD Doppler radar, there's really not a whole lot to look at, and it's going to stay that way over the next few days because we're going to see sunny afternoons and clear evenings. Temperatures will even get above, uh, above average for this time of year by quite a bit as we approach 60 degrees. In the meantime, tonight we're mostly clear, calm, and mild. Overnight lows near 26 degrees. Making way for tomorrow, mostly sunny. We'll be approaching that 60 degree territory and we're going to stay there Saturday and Sunday. Monday, we could cool down just a tad bit while staying above average for this time of year, but we're going to watch for some in and out cloud cover as we start our work week. That's not going to keep us from cooling or for warming up on Tuesday as those highs. Again, we could see 60 degrees for a third day in the seven day forecast. My good news is I'm the first in the family to graduate college. What a bad we celebrate first and last with some MSU Denver graduates by hitting them with one last pop quiz question. What's your good news? Time is running out for limited time savings on the Hyundai you've always wanted. Because when the holidays end, so do these deals. Plus, the season's best savings also come with America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Hurry in. Don't let these deals get away. Sign and drive a Tucson or Santa Fe with zero down, zero first month's payment, and zero security deposit. See your Colorado Hyundai dealer. Congratulations. <laughs> Weddings, they don't have playbooks. But if they did, a diamond from Trice Jewelers would get the win every time. Trice Jewelers has Colorado's largest selection of diamonds, directly mined and ethically sourced. For that moment that lasts forever, give her the ring she'll never forget. Trice Jewelers, where you simply cannot find a better diamond at a lower price anywhere else. Look, Mom, I found one. Oh, yeah, you did, but we need an ATM from our bank, unless you want to spend a small fortune in fees. Uh, no, thank you. 
Banking with us means more fee-free ATMs than the two largest U.S. banks combined. Well, that would be convenient, but there is no BMO here. Yeah, you can just call us BMO. And there is now. You know what else is convenient? Mobile banking that makes it easy to track your goals and manage your money. Get out of town. But we just got here. When a bank helps you get and stay ahead, that's the BMO effect. BMO. With the Freestyle Libre 2 system, know your glucose level and where it's headed without finger sticks. Manage your diabetes with more confidence. Now widely covered by Medicare for patients managing diabetes with insulin. Visit freestylelibre.us to learn more. Why Window Nation? Because we know that it's how you finish that matters. First, we measure each window three times to ensure a proper fit. At the factory, each window goes through a 50-point quality inspection. Only then can it be installed in your home by our factory trained installers. During installation, we give each window a 20-point quality inspection. At Window Nation, every step matters from start to finish. Now at Window Nation, get 0% interest for five years plus. Take 50% off any style window. Visit on Havana Street, the one-stop shop for all of your automotive needs. New tires, oil changes, a car wash, tune-up, or millions of auto parts. Service and maintain your car and shop on Havana Street. Hundreds of students turned their tassels today at MSU Denver. Those graduates are looking forward to all kinds of possibilities and celebrating end of years of studying. One last short answer question at graduation, though. What's your good news? After today, you may not call yourself students, but promise yourself right now that you will never stop trying to learn. Marty Tomasevich Horan. My good news is I have graduated after 10 years. <laughs> intense. You can feel the energy. My good news is I'm done with school. Woohoo! One more lawyer to go. Well, law school to go now. And then um, I also got an exhaust from my car. So that's good news for me. I, I'm not sure if my neighbors will like that. Do you like to drive fast? <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> my good news is I'm the first in the family to graduate college. What a bad thing. My good news is, is my kids are wonderful. My family's here. Uh, I just graduated, and uh, I coach at TJ. We're six and one. My good news is I'm so proud of my granddaughter. It wasn't an easy thing to get this degree. She worked and she went to school. My good news is uh, I finally graduated. My good news is my family's here to celebrate. And move your tassel to the left side of your cap. My good news is that I just graduated in computer science and I'm so ready to finally move on to the next step of my life. Congrats to each and every one of them. Here comes our video editor, Aureli Mora, with this week's final feedback. Were they wild today? They were wild today. You were wild today. That's next. See that RAV4? Bring 49 down and pay the payment on the window. See that used SUV? Bring 49 down and pay the payment on the window. Alpine Buick GMC is selling every used car and truck for just 49 down. And pay the payment on the window. Mic drop. Oh. Dropped it. Mazda CX-5, 49 down, $299 per month. Chevy Silverado Crew Cabs, 49 down, $449 per month. Call 800, new credit. Bring 49 down. And pay the payment on the window. At Alpine Buick GMC. Nine News, home of the Broncos. Tis the season to fill your home with love and your table with cheer. And Safeway is here to help. We offer locally sourced Colorado Angus Choice beef and our oven-ready prime rib roast is cut fresh daily by our in-store butchers. Plus, you'll find all the trimmings for your holiday table. No matter how you celebrate, happy holidays from our family at Safeway to yours. Save time on your holiday shopping. Simply order online for convenient delivery or curbside pickup. Safeway. Fresh foods, local flavors. Details make the holidays. Get the GV70 for 1.99% APR plus a thousand bonus cash exclusively at your Colorado Genesis retailers.
Every second counts after an accident. Whether it happens in the morning, noon, or night, you can call us. I'm Rob Wilhite of the Wilhite Law Firm. Since 1977, our priority has been taking care of our clients and providing them with the best service 24-7. Diamonds at historic lows. One carat GIA white SI quality diamonds, nineteen ninety plus designer mounts, just four ninety nine. Two carat studs, nineteen ninety, and three carat three stone rings, forty nine ninety. Buy factory direct and save. The Jewelry Exchange, Greenwood Village. It's a sign, the spreading holiday cheer, while it simultaneously pleads for parking enforcement. Neighbors have decorated an abandoned car near Sloan's Lake. I love this so much. It's been sitting there for months on a busted tire. It's clearly not going anywhere. So the neighbors are like, let's make it Christmas. So they put on stockings and bows and lights and they spelled out toe and tinsel across the window. I still don't think the city of Denver is actually gonna notice or do anything about this, but we've noticed, so we put it on TV. I don't know, maybe the city's gonna go and tow it now that we put it on TV. But that's amazing, and these people seem like awesome neighbors. If you see a sign that makes you do a double take, send it our way, email it to next at 9news.com. A few of you had the same thought on what to do with Denver's excess roosters. Ben writes, winner, winner, chicken dinner, and via text, young roosters are very edible give them to a soup kitchen. Poor guys.